Chapter 27, A Hole in the Fence. Zoe led her father out of the pub, round the Rottweiler and onto the street. Dad stood there swaying under the orange street light for a moment. He looked into his daughter's eyes. There was a long stretch of silence. Then, I'm frightened, love, said Dad. I am too. Zoe reached out her hand and held her father's tenderly. It was the first time they had held hands in months, maybe years. Dad used to give her the best cuddles, but after Mum died, he had retreated to the back of his eyes and never came out anymore. But we can do this together, said Zoe. I know we can. Dad looked down at his daughter's hand, so small in his, and a tear formed in his eye. Zoe smiled supportively at her dad. Come on, she said. Soon they were running through the lit streets, the intervals of dark and light going by faster and faster. So this nutter makes rats out of burgers, Dad said breathlessly. No, Dad, it's the other way round. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. And he has this enormous warehouse on this industrial estate on the outskirts of town, panted Zoe, tugging her father along by his hand. Oh, that's where I used to work in the ice cream factory, exclaimed Dad. It's miles away. It's not. I used to take a shortcut when I was late. We, we just need to cut through here. Follow me. Dad took his daughter by the hand and led her through a hole in a fence. Zoe couldn't help but smile at the excitement of it all. Then her excitement faded a bit when she realised they were entering a rubbish dump. Soon Dad was knee deep and Zoe was waist deep, wading through trash. Zoe stumbled, so Dad lifted up his daughter and put her on his shoulders like he used to when they went for a walk in the park when she was very little. His hands held her legs tight. Together they made their way through the sea of bin bags. Soon the warehouses were in sight, a titanic graveyard of empty buildings bathed in the harshest of light. That's the one I used to work at, said Dad, pointing to one of the warehouses. A beaten old sign on the side of it read, the delicious ice cream come and eat. Come and eat? asked Zoe. Someone's taken the pee, replied Dad, and they both chuckled. Gosh, it's been years since I've been down here, said Dad. Zoe pointed out the warehouse that now had a van-shaped hole in the wall. That's Bert's one. Right. Come on, we need to save Armitage. Father and daughter skirted around the outside edge towards the giant hole in the wall. They stepped inside and peered at the cavernous warehouse. The huge building appeared empty, except for the thousands of rats. The poor creatures were all still piled up in cages, awaiting their grisly fate as a fast food snack. Bert was nowhere to be seen. He must still be at the flat with Zoe's wicked stepmother, waiting to trap Zoe when she came home. No doubt salivating at the idea of turning her into a burger, albeit a particularly large one. With trepidation, Zoe and Dad stepped inside and Zoe showed her father the, the terrifying pulverisation machine. He goes up this ladder and drops the rats into this giant funnel and the poor little things are rolled flat here before being formed into patties. Oh my word, said Dad, so it is true. What did I tell you? replied Zoe. Well, which one of these poor little blighters is Armitage? asked Dad, gazing at the thousands of terrified rodents squashed high into the mountain of cages. I don't know, she said, scouring all the little frightened faces peering out from the cages, which had been stacked on top of each other. Seeing them all there, squashed in together in a big tower of rats, made her think of the block she and Dad and Sheila lived in. Still, thought Zoe. The rats had it worse, what with the getting minced up into burgers. Now, where is he? She said. He's got a very cute little pink nose. Sorry, love. They all look the same to me, said Dad, desperately trying to spot one with a particularly pink nose. Armitage? Armitage? called Zoe. All the rats eeked. Every single one of them wanted to escape. We'll just have to set them all free, said Zoe. Good plan, replied Dad. Right, you climb on my shoulders and unlock the top one. Dad lifted his little daughter up and sat her on his shoulders. 
She then held onto his head and slowly stood up. Zoe started unwinding the pieces of metal wire that kept the cages locked. I say cages, they were really old deep fat fryers. How are you getting on? said Dad. I'm trying, Dad. Nearly got the first one open. Good girl, called up Dad encouragingly. However, before Zoe could open the first cage, Bert's van, looking decidedly the worse for wear, came thundering into the warehouse, smashing the huge metal sliding door into the air as it did so. Crash! Before screeching to a halt. Dad and Zoe were in deep, deep trouble.